In this video I'm going to show you how to use the polypad tool on the Mathigon website to create some tiling patterns using regular polygons. I'll put the link to the website in the description below but when you go to the polypad page you need to check that you've opened the geometry link on the left hand side here indicated by my cursor and then choose polygons and shapes and we're going to focus on these shapes at the top here these regular polygons um, we've got triangles, quadrilaterals, uh, pentagons, hexagons, heptagons and octagons but if we need shapes with more sides there's a tool down here at the bottom as well it says regular this pink tool and we might use that later on. I'm going to show you three examples um, and I'm going to show you all the different features of the software that will come in handy for you. So the first one I'm going to do is a simple one using squares. So I'm going to go to the polygons and shapes, choose the blue square um, and just click on it and you'll see a blue square appears on my um, drawing site, the drawing page here on the right hand side. Um, and it's got some clips around here that we'll look at later on, but we can ignore that first of all. Now we're going to make a tiling pattern with these squares, so we'll need more than one. And the simplest way to do that, but not necessarily the best way, uh, is just to click on another square. We get another square there, and we can just drag that into place. And you'll notice as I get close to this square, it snaps into place next to it. I'll just show you that again. As I draw it close, it just snaps into place and locks next to it. And then I'll make a couple more squares um, and drag those into place. And there we go. And uh, we've got the start of a tiling pattern. And of course, we could make more squares and um, drag these over the whole page and fill the page. It wouldn't be a very interesting pattern, but there's a couple of things I'm going to show you that one that makes it more interesting and one that makes it a bit quicker. The first one, to make it a bit quicker, is I can change the properties of one of these squares. So I'm just going to go back to my first square there and I get a menu open here and under the three dots I've got advanced options. If I click on that and I'm going to change interactivity, the third box down, from normal to clone when moving. So I'll just click on that and look what happens now. If I go to this square and if I move it, it just creates another one and then move it again and it creates another one. Now I have to do this from the original square all the time so I have to remember which one was my original square but I can keep going back to that original square and creating more of these um, square tiles to go into my pattern. I have to use that original one. If I try and use a different one um, it just moves it. It doesn't make a copy so I have to stick on the original one. So that's a quicker way of making multiple tiles very very easily once you've got the initial tile in place. The second thing I was going to show you was the colours. It's not very interesting when they're all blue but we've got a colour wheel here so I'll just click on one of the tiles. I'll go to the colour wheel. Um, I've got some blue tiles here but I think I'll have some yellow tiles to go with them so I'll make that one yellow. Okay, sort of mustardy yellow. Um, and I might make these in a nice sort of checkerboard style. So I'll click on that one and make that yellow. And again, I, I've got to do these one at a time. It's quite, it's quite time consuming. But I can save myself some time by doing what I just did before. Um, if you remember, I was clicking and dragging. Um, I have to choose the right one to do that. So I can click and drag my yellow ones um, and just put more of those in place. Um, and that can, that'll work nicely for the yellow ones. But I can't click and drag the blue ones, so I'll just go to one of the blue ones and go down to Advanced, Interactivity, Clone when moving, and now I can click and drag the blue ones as well. I have to remember again which ones are the original ones. Um, I don't want that blue one, that needs to be a yellow one. And so I can start quickly making these patterns and filling in the gaps without having to do too much work. And so I can make a slightly more interesting pattern there. So that's the first pattern. You've seen how to make the shapes, you've seen how they lock together, uh, and you've seen how you can clone them more readily and how you can change the colours. We're going to go and look at a second pattern now um, that uses some slightly different polygons. So I need to erase the uh, workspace to do that. Um, and there are a number of ways of doing that. One way you've got an erase button here, um, so we could go through that and we could click on all of these tiles. It's quite a time consuming way, but that's quite a useful way if you've got individual tiles that you want to remove, you don't want them on there. And you'll notice we can't remove these. That's because we've changed the settings on them. So we have to go back to, we'll click on the Move tool, go back to that one, we'll change its properties, and we'll change it to Normal, and we'll do the same with this one. We'll change its properties, um, Interactivity Normal, um, that's OK. And we should now be able to delete them. Ah, that one I didn't change. Let's go and change that. 
interactivity normal and now I can delete that. So now we're going to have a look at a slightly different pattern and this time we're going to use triangles. So in our first pattern we used four squares. The squares have angles of 90 degrees inside so we can put four of them around a point. We're going to use equilateral triangles this time and they have angles of 60 degrees so we'll need six of them. So I'm just going to choose an equilateral triangle there and put it into place. And we're going to use some of the techniques that we, we saw before. Now I'm going to drag my second triangle on. Uh, I can drag it if I want, I'll just click. And um, the trouble is it's not going to lock next to it, it'll lock in place like that. But I actually want it to be in this space here. So that's where I use this circle. And this is a rotate tool. So I can click and drag and you'll notice that the angle of rotation appears as I turn it. And as I get close, I want to turn it 60 degrees. It actually snaps to 60 degrees. The software is geometrically aware. It knows that 60 degrees is an important angle for equilateral triangles. So it snaps to 60 degrees. I get above 50 and the next one it goes, it goes to 60 and it snaps there. And now I can move that into place. Okay. And then I'm going to use the techniques we used before. Uh, my triangles are orange. Um, I think I'll go for um, orange and um, this kind of dark pink colour next to each other. Not to everyone's taste, but I quite like it. And again, we'll click on those and we'll change, we'll change it to advanced and we'll change it to clone when moving. And I'll go to the second one I created um, and go to clone when moving. Okay, And then I can just click and drag click and drag, click and drag, click and drag and I can very quickly, oops, sorry I need to move, make sure I move the right one all the time, uh, I need to start with the right, the correct triangle, the one that's been set up for cloning um, and just click and drag and put lots of triangles in place there and very quickly start what we call tiling the, the white space on this, it's called tiling the plane, uh, very quickly start doing that and making a simple pattern there um, that I can extend across the whole page. Now it's going to take me a while to do that with these triangles. Uh, so there is a technique, if I think this, these triangles are quite small, um, you'll see when we get to bigger polygons they can be quite big. If you want to have bigger ones um, then what you can do, I'm just going to drag a new triangle onto the pattern. Um, let's drag one over here. Um, also on this advanced menu is scale. Um, and I can change the scale to 2 and get bigger shapes if I want to. Now it's really important that you use the same scale for all the shapes in your design. Do not change the scale within a design. If one of the shapes is scaled to 2, then all of them must be as well. Don't combine shapes with different scale sides, because if you do, their sides won't lock together exactly, they won't click together, so they must all be the same scale size. If you're using the bigger polygons, they're, or the polygons with more size, they're bigger and you might not need to scale them up. It's only when you've got the, the shapes like the triangles. Okay, we're going to look at a tiling pattern next that uses uh, more than one shape, so it's using two different shapes. Uh, and I'll just show you a quicker way to clear the, um, the drawing space here. Um, and if you click on the move tool at the toolbar at the bottom, um, click and drag, it selects all those shapes, and then you can just press delete on your keypad and it will delete them all. Now, why hasn't it deleted these two? For the same reason we had before. Um, if we click away from them, uh, click on them, uh, go to advanced, and we need to change those to be normal. Okay. Now, if you know which ones it is, you can change them before you do the delete. Now we can select them and delete them. Um, but if you didn't know which ones they are, uh, just do the delete, and the ones that don't get deleted will be the ones that needed to be changed back to normal. Okay, so we've cleared our workspace now, uh, and now we're going to go on and have a look at a design that uses two different polygons. So the next pattern we're going to do is going to use an octagon uh, and a square combined. We're going to use multiple octagons and multiple squares, of course. So I'll click on my octagon, um, and I'm going to change that so that it is its interactivity is to clone when moving, so I can make multiple octagons. Uh, and I'm going to combine that with a square, um, which is there. And I'm just going to rotate that square. Um, and again, it knows that 45 degrees is a useful angle for a square. It's half of a right angle, and it snaps into place like that. So my square snaps into place next to it. Um, I'm not sure I like the purple and the blue, so I think I'll go with maybe a um, maybe that orange. 
looks okay with the purple so it's up to you which colors you choose and again these are the only two shapes I'm going to use and they're going to be used in this rotation so I can click on them and go to advanced and say clone when moving Click on that one go to advanced and clone when moving um, and then I can create multiple shapes again so just by cloning them or moving them rather I will clone them. sorry that's got to go back to the original shape all the time um, and I can put those there then let's put some squares in here. Okay, that's our regular octagon. Let's put some more octagons in. And you'll see because this is an octagon, it's got eight sides, it's filling the space much more quickly than our triangles did, which are three-sided shapes. All of these polygons have the same length side, which is why they tile together. If you choose polygons with different length sides, they won't tile. So this one we could use to fill the space much more quickly. And if we wanted to, we could change these octagons. We could have two different colors of octagon in there, um, and we can change the patterns if we like. But it's nice to have patterns with symmetry, um, repeating colors and things like that, and those sort of properties. But you can see quite quickly we can create a tiling pattern there. OK, um, right, I'm just going to show you one more thing. So again, I'm going to clear the, um, the workspace. So click on the, the arrow, drag to select everything, press delete. Um, and the two that are left are the ones that were set up to be cloned. So click away, select them one at a time, change them to normal. And then I can drag and delete. And I've got my workspace clear. Now, in the polygons and shapes, we've got three, four, five, six, seven, and eight sided polygons, so from equilateral triangles up to octagons. But what happens if you want a 10 sided shape or a 12 sided shape? Well, to do that, go down to the regular shape at the bottom here, this dark pink one, and just click on that, and you get a regular hexagon initially, which isn't necessarily useful because you've already got one of those up here. But if you take this circle at the bottom, you can start dragging that and you'll see we get more and more sides. There's an octagon, nine sides, 10 sides, 11, 12, and so on, 13, 14, 15. And we can get polygons with as many sides as we like. And you'll see they get bigger um, as we add more sides, of course. The side lengths stay the same. Um, and uh, crucially, that these can then tessellate, but you will need to count the sides. You can stop at any point uh, and just do a check on how many sides you've got. Um, you don't need to count as you're dragging. You can stop, and if you haven't got enough or you've got too many, you can click and resize them. So if you want to make a shape that has more than eight sides, and you might want to use um, nonagons, decagons, dodecagons, then you can get them from that regular tool there. OK, so that's how you use this uh, polypad um, website to create the tiling patterns. All you need to do now is decide which types of polygon you're going to use. The ones we've looked at now very easily tile the pane, uh, plane. Sorry, some of them won't. Some of them won't work. You'll be able to put them together uh, once, but you won't be able to extend it. Others need to be combined so you'll have two different types of pattern um, and you can continue those across and fill all the space with the different types of pattern. But to be mathematically accurate, the important thing is that you are keeping a regular repeating pattern going across the whole, whole space, the whole screen, um, and that you have got uh, a pattern in the colours of the shapes as well as in which shapes they are. So that's everything you need to know. All you need to have now is the shapes you're going to use and good luck creating your tiling patterns.